In this demo, we are going to use the AdventureWorks 2012 demo database. This is the same database that we discussed and attached in our previous module. Let me switch the context of the database to AdventureWorks. Here is a simple query which is based on sales.salespersons table. I do get a number of results here which is close to 17 rows. Let's look at two important aspects here. There is one particular button right up there which is Control L for displaying an estimated execution plan. I'm going to use the estimated execution plan first on the same query that we just wrote. Here you can see that this is an estimated execution plan. As the name suggests, this is an estimate based on the statistics that is available with SQL Server. Here you're seeing that we are doing a clustered index scan and the operator here shows the estimated values for various operations. Any execution plan has to be read from right to left, like unconventional way because we do read from left to right. Here you are seeing what is the estimated I.O. cost, estimated CPU cost, estimated subtree cost which is the operator cost here because we are looking at the rightmost entry. And you see the final select and it says what is the operation and the cost that is associated with this whole select statement. This is a simple way to look at the estimated execution plan. Here you can see that there is no results that has been sent out. Now I'm going to go ahead and select what we call as the include actual execution plan which is control M and then go ahead and execute. Here now you're seeing that the query got actually executed and return the same 17 rows and the execution plan has been attached. Here you will see that you will see extra operations which is in this particular case you are seeing the actual execution mode which is row mode and when you say row mode you are using the normal clustered index or the indexes. With SQL Server 2012 we also brought in a batch mode which is used for column store indexes. So you will see that a row or a batch can be called out here. You will also see the actual number of rows which is 17 which equivalent to what we actually got in the result set. There are a number of other things which is the number of executions, estimated number of rows and it is mapping it to the other one. This is the actual execution plan when compared to what you saw which is an estimated execution plan a moment ago. Here is another query that we are going to execute which is based on salesperson and salesperson quota history table. In this particular case, we want to just go ahead and explain you certain other aspects of how SQL Server uses some of these operators. In this particular case, I just want you to look at the physical operator which is an clustered index scan and the logical operator which is the clustered index scan. In this particular case, both the physical and the logical operators are the same. To understand what in what way these are different, a physical operator in this particular case we are just hovered over the nested loop which is the actual execution mode for SQL Server whereas the logical operation here is the inner join which is as per definition inside our select statement. So you can see that we just wanted to look at one operator which is an interesting one which is nothing but the physical operation and the logical operation. Whenever you look at the cost, the cost and the subtree cost includes everything that is below this particular operator. So the nested loop and the subtree cost for this includes everything that is run within this particular region. Next, let's go ahead and change some of the things. What we are going to do next is to go ahead and explicitly state a hash join. You previously saw that we were using an inner loop join and SQL Server was using a physical operator of nested loop. In this particular case, we have gone ahead and changed it from a hash join which is in this particular case you are seeing that it is as per what we had defined. Hints and using of hints can be used inside SQL Server select statements but what SQL Server does and uses it inside is much more interesting. For this particular case I am going to just go ahead and run both these queries side by side. You get the same amount of rows of 163 and 163 for both the queries and let's look at the execution plan. The execution plan over here shows that the first query that was written is just 40% of 
of the overall batch whereas the second query is close to about 62% of the overall batch. This shows that giving an explicit hint in this particular case and scenario seems to be costly. And you can also see that the sort operator has moved from this particular region to a different location. Now giving an explicit hint can change your execution plan and at the same time can also become costly. It is advisable to leave SQL Server's mode of cost-based optimizer to choose which is the best and optimal plan. One other thing to note here which I did mention is that when you see the arrow and a thicker arrow means that you have lot of rows that are coming out of this. In this particular case you are seeing that the actual number of rows is 163 and it is getting fed to the nested loop. If I hover over the top particular arrow you can see that it's a thinner arrow and it's got only 17 rows. So the thicker the arrow the larger the amount of rows that are actually being sent out from this particular operator.